Welcome to my classroom once again. I am Miss D and in this video I will try to explain excitability of the cell and the factors that affect the excitability. So in this figure we see the resting membrane potential and a threshold which is a little less negative compared to the resting membrane potential. Excitability of a cell is determined by the distance between these two levels. So, if the distance between threshold and resting membrane potential becomes smaller, the cell is said to be more excitable, which means it is easier to produce an action potential in this cell. But if these two levels move away from each other, the distance between them increases, the cell becomes less excitable, which means it is more difficult to produce an action potential in the cell or to excite it. So this means that if we change the resting membrane potential level in a cell or the threshold level, we can change the excitability in this cell. Let us start by talking about how we can change the resting membrane potential in an excitable cell. We know from our video on the resting membrane potential that the main ion that determines the resting membrane potential in almost all cells is the potassium ion. So what determines the resting membrane potential is the concentration difference of potassium between the two sides of the cell membrane. So this concentration difference is determining the next potential of potassium and next potential in turn is determining the resting membrane potential. So the main ion that is important for resting membrane potential is potassium. If we play with the concentration difference of potassium, we can change the nearest potential and therefore we can change the resting membrane potential. Most of the changes that affect the concentration difference happen on the outer concentration of potassium. So in this figure I will talk about the uh, effects of a decrease in the outer concentration of potassium which is called hypokalemia. If we examine this word, hypo means low level, kalium is potassium, amia is in the blood. So hypokalemia means there is a low level of potassium in the blood. Let's examine it in a small figure here in, a, in an excitable cell. There is high potassium in the cell and low potassium outside the cell. If we decrease the potassium concentration outside the cell even more, the difference, the concentration difference between inside and outside is going to be even bigger. So the concentration force that pushes potassium outside is going to be bigger, which means the next potential that can balance this effect is also get, going to get bigger. Bigger means a bigger next potential means a more negative next potential. So, when you have hypokalemia, the next potential of potassium is going to be more negative and this is going to reflect on the resting membrane potential. The resting membrane potential, in this case, in our cell, is going to become more negative. As you see, now the distance between threshold and the resting membrane potential is bigger and the cell becomes less excitable. What do you think will happen if the outside concentration of potassium increases? For example, I mean, the name of this is hyper, 
hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia means the amount of kalium or potassium in the blood is high. In case of hyperkalemia, this time, the resting membrane potential is going to be less negative because the next potential of potassium is going to be less negative and the excitability of the cell is going to be higher. In case of hyperkalemia, the nerve and muscle cells become more excitable and they can result in unwanted muscle contractions and or they can result in unwanted neuronal discharge, discharge which may end up with what we call epilepsy in the central nervous system. So hypo and hyperkalemia are the conditions that affect the resting membrane potential and through, effect, through their effect on the resting membrane potential they are able to affect the excitability of the cell. What about the threshold? The threshold is the point at which voltage-gated sodium channels open. The, this effect, the effect of threshold, is uh, by another ion, and this time our ion is calcium. Calcium ion is attracted to the voltage-gated sodium channel, but it cannot pass through the voltage-gated sodium channel. If you talk about the cell membrane with a protein forming the channel through which sodium passes, calcium ions on the outside of the cell come and accumulate around the opening of the voltage-gated sodium channel. So, we have a normal level of calcium in our blood, normal calcemia, and we have a normal level of threshold for the opening of voltage-gated sodium channels. If the number of calcium ions around the channel decrease, you are going to have a different effect. The calcium ions are blocking the entrance of voltage-gated sodium channel and they are making it more difficult for sodium to pass through the channel into the cell. So if you have hypocalcemia, this blocking effect of calcium ions is going to be removed and sodium ions can more easily pass through the channel. This is actually causing the hypocalcemia is actually causing a movement in the threshold towards the resting membrane potential. And if we compare the low threshold with the normal resting membrane potential, now you see that oh, this is not the normal resting membrane potential, excuse me. Here you see that the distance between uh, the threshold and resting membrane potential is smaller and the cell becomes more excitable. On the other side of the story is what we call hypercalcemia. This means that in the extracellular fluid the level of calcium is above the normal level. Now there will be a lot more calcium outside the sodium channel and if the sodium ion wants to get through the channel, it's going to have a bigger trouble, which means the threshold of the cell now moves to a less negative value. If we compare this 
new threshold of hypercalcemia with our resting mem normal resting membrane potential, we see that there is a bigger distance for the cell to change its membrane potential in order to be able to reach the threshold. So the excitability of the cell in case of hypercalcemia is lower than a normal condition. Here we have seen that, in summary, we have seen that the excitability of a cell depends on the distance between the resting membrane potential and the threshold. Resting membrane potential can move up or down by the effect of the changes in outside potassium concentration and threshold can move up and down by the effect of the changes in outside calcium concentration. This way, these two ions, either through resting membrane potential or through the threshold, they are able to play with the excitability of a cell. A cell becomes more excitable in case of hyperkalemia and hypocalcemia. If we try to give examples to these effects of potassium and calcium, we can talk about two very commonly observed conditions. Uh, in case of diarrhea, we lose a lot of potassium ions. So the level of potassium that we lose can reach a hypokalemia level. In a patient like this, the movements of the bowels, which also contain some muscle excitable cells, in a case like this, in a case of diarrhea with hypokalemia, the bowels may suddenly stop. An unexperienced doctor may think that uh, the diarrhea is over. Actually, the condition of the patient is not getting any better, it's getting worse because the, the bowels have stopped because of hypokalemia, diarrhea. The cause of diarrhea is not healed. Another common example can be given about hypocalcemia. Here, everybody, most of the people, knows that we have a thyroid gland in front of our neck. Just behind the thyroid gland, we have very tiny parathyroid glands, two on each side, totally four parathyroid glands that, that um, control the balance of calcium in our blood. So, removal of the thyroid gland because of enlargement, which is called goiter, is a very common operation done by the surgeons, general surgeons. If the surgeon is not very careful while, re while removing the thyroid gland, he, may, he or she may at the same time remove the parathyroid glands. When the parathyroid glands are accidentally removed, the, their control over the level of calcium is going to be lost and the level of calcium in the blood is going to drop, which is changing the threshold and increasing the excitability of a cell. If the excitability of the cells increase in a patient like this, you are going to see sudden movements of muscles in the face or maybe in the body all over because excitability of the muscles have increased. Another thing that you may observe is epilepsy in the central nervous system. So I wanted to finish the discussion of excitability by a few examples that can be observed in the clinics commonly. Thank you for listening.